Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Me Mehu Motani, and I wanted to welcome you to the fourth talk of our seminar series, Information Theory in Singapore. Uh, and also, if you're here for the first time, um, welcome to Singapore. Uh, well, virtual Singapore, that is. And uh, as I've gotten into the habit of saying, uh, I wish I could welcome you to Singapore in person, but, you know, these strange times and, you know, this virtual welcome will have to do. And if you can, if you can somehow see me and see my background, uh, you'll see the view from my office, right? Uh, yeah, this is my running joke. Yeah, I wish this was the view from my office. This is the Singapore skyline. And uh, I hope that this pandemic does pass soon and you can see, you know, beautiful Singapore uh, for yourself. All right, um, the information theory in Singapore seminar is, org is organized by a team that includes Han Mao from NTU, Tsai Kui and Tang from SUPD, and me from NUS. Uh, our aim is to promote, advocate, and spread the joy of information theory and coding uh, theory within Singapore and around the world. After this talk, there's one more talk for the remainder of 2020, and we'll be putting out the 2021 schedule soon. So be on the lookout for that, and please feel free to spread the word. Uh, today is the fourth talk in the seminar series. Uh, before we get going, let me address a few logistical matters. Please keep your microphone muted and your video muted for the duration of the talk. If you have questions, you can post them into the group chat. Uh, we'll address questions in the Q&A at the end of the talk. Okay, now it is my great pleasure to introduce Professor Raymond Young as our speaker today. Professor Young is the Cho Ming Lee Professor of Information Engineering at the Department of Information Engineering at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. He is a renowned, a world renowned, sorry, world renowned expert in information theory and a co founder of the field of network coding. He's currently serving as co director of the Institute of Network Coding at CUHK. Uh, Professor Young has received numerous awards and honors for his research contributions, including the 2005 IEEE Information Theory Society Paper Award, the 2018 ACM SIG Mobile Test of Time Paper Award, and the 2016 IEEE Eric E. Sumner Award, just to highlight a few. He's a fellow of the IEEE, the Hong Kong Academy of Engineering Sciences, and the Hong Kong Institute of Engineers. And now I'm also thrilled to let you know, and this is kind of hot off the presses, that Professor Young has been named the recipient of the IEEE 2021 Richard W. Hamming Medal for his fundamental contribution to information theory and pioneering uh, network coding and its applications. Uh, the Hamming Medal is one of the highest honors in engineering and computer science. It is the first time this award has been won by an Asian researcher since his establishment in 1988. Uh, I've known Raymond for many years, and in addition to uh, his incredible talent, um, he's very kind. Uh, I'm also happy to say that we share a common alma mater. We both got our PhDs from uh, Cornell University, though at different times. Uh, one new thing I recently learned about Raymond is that um, you know, early on in, in his career, he was a consultant for NASA's uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, for salvaging the malfunctioning uh, Galileo spacecraft. Galileo was the space probe that studied the planet Jupiter and its moons. Um, and if all that was not enough, Raymond is currently running a stealth startup, um, NHOP Technologies, that's trying to change the way we operate multi-hop networks using innovative coding strategies. Uh, all of that sounds very, very exciting. So I'm very honored to have my colleague and friend, um, Raymond Young, share his thoughts with us today on Shannon's information measures and Markov structures. Uh, let us warmly welcome Professor Raymond Young. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mehu, for the uh, very kind introduction. I almost couldn't recognize myself. Well, and also I would like to thank the organizers for this great effort for uh, for spreading information theory, hopefully like uh, COVID-19. Okay, so, um, all right, uh, today's talk is Shannon's information measures and uh, Markov structures. And the, uh, well, well, this should be an uh, easy listening talk as long as you know uh, a, little bit, a little bit of uh, information theory. 
Okay. Um, all right. The, the, uh, I start with um, uh, uh, some reference materials. The first one is a um, is actually a uh, an old paper by uh, Hugo Ding. Uh, there was a uh, paper written in Russian, uh, and recently someone uh, actually found an English translation of it. Uh, the title is in English is on the amount of information, and uh, that actually was the first work uh, I know of that formally talks about. Uh, the one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, information measures, Shannon's information measures, and set theory. And then uh, in 1991, I, I wrote this paper, a new outlook on Shannon's information measures. It's kind of a uh, uh, closed loop of, of the story. And the, for other background materials, I also would like to refer you to uh, uh, two chapters in my textbook. Okay, now this is the uh, the old paper by Hugo Ding, and that's the uh, English translation of it. Okay, I'll start with a very simple example, and I'm sure that uh, uh, most of you have seen this uh, picture before. Now, in this picture, we have two circles, one uh, actually representing uh, two random variables, x1, x2. The, uh, this circle on the left-hand side represents the entropy of x1, this represents the entropy of x2. Um, the, the union of the two circles represent entropy of x1 comma x2, and uh, this is um, this this uh, part uh, represent entropy of x1 conditioning on x2, and this is conditioning uh, entropy of x2 given x1, and the intersection corresponds to the uh, mutual information between x1 and x2. Okay, now this is um, the 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 one to one correspondence uh, between uh, information measures and uh, set theory can be captured by this set of substitution of symbols, which actually uh, uh, was first talked about in, in Hugo Ding's paper. Okay, on the left hand side are the symbols associated with information theory measures, and on the right hand side are, are symbols associated with uh, uh, set theories. Set theory, okay. Now, whenever we see H or I, we uh, 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 we replace that by mu star, which I'm going to talk talk about in a moment. Whenever you see comma, it becomes union. Whenever you see semicolon, uh, it becomes intersection. Whenever you see conditioning, you see uh, conditioning bar in information theory. You uh, it corresponds to to the set minus, where a minus b is equal to a intersect b complement. Uh, okay. Now this mu star is a unique sign measure, uh, which is a set edge function called the I measure. In Hugo Ding's work, uh, uh, he actually uh, had a, uh, uh, he didn't have the mu star. Actually, he had something called, just called mu. Mu is, he, uh, he referred to it as some uh, sign measure, which, uh, and, um, and in my 1991 uh, paper, I pin it down to a unique sign measure. So that, that actually uh, establishes the full one-to-one uh, -one correspondence between uh, set theory and information theory. Okay, now here are some examples. So uh, the first one is uh, the entropy of x1 uh, in this, uh, given x2, uh, it is equal. Uh, okay, I, I want to emphasize that this is equal, okay? Not just correspond. So it is equal to uh, mu star of x1 tilde. x1 tilde is a, uh, is a set variable that corresponds to the random variable x1. And uh, the conditioning bar corresponds to uh, uh, minus set minus and we have x1 tilde minus x2 tilde so whenever you see a random variable x1 you replace it by uh, uh, the set variable x1 tilde so on and so forth likewise for uh, entropy of x2 given x1 and the third line we have a uh, uh, mutual information between x1 and x2 that corresponds to mu star uh, x1 tilde intersect x2 tilde okay now for, for n equals two, where n is the number of random variables, the values of mu star on atoms are all the Shannon's, are all Shannon's information measures, which we know are non-negative. What I'm talking about is this, which is the uh, uh, um, entropy of x1 given x2, and this mutual information between x1 and x2, and this entropy of x2 given x1. So these three atoms each cor uh, correspond to Shannon's information measure, which we all we, we know, are the negative. 
And that's why this uh, measure defined as such, defined by the, the value of mu star on these three atoms is a, is a uh, non-negative. It's, it's called a measure, which takes a non-negative values. Okay, so now this is the case for uh, two random variables. How about three random variables? We also have this picture. And um, for three random variables, it turns out that the, uh, the value of uh, mu star on the atoms all correspond to Shannon's information measures, except for the one in the middle, which I'm going to explain. So first of all, let's check this. These three uh, atoms, they correspond to um, a conditional entropy. So it's not negative. Okay, these three uh, correspond to um, conditional mutual information. So they're also, again, not negative. But the middle one, we, we're not sure what it is, okay? In, in a set theoretic uh, terms, this would be the uh, uh, mu star, which is the underlying uh, 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 measure um, of this atom, which is the intersection of the three set variables, x1 tilde, x2 tilde, and x3 tilde. Okay, it is actually possible to construct random variables x1, x2, and x3, such that the measure of this intersection of the three sets is, um, is strictly less than zero. And here's a classical example. So this is the case when x1 and x2 are um, ID fair bits, and x3 is equal to the modulo 2 sum of the two bits x1 and x2. Okay, now the, uh, uh, as a synergy check, we, okay, for, for these three, three bits x1, x2, and x3, they are uh, pairwise independent, dependent, but not mutually independent. So, and one of them is also determined by the other two. For example, x, x, once you know x1, x2, you also know x3. So, so this corresponds to the three zeros here, okay? Uh, this, this zero here, uh, this atom corresponds to entropy of x1 given x2 and x3, so it should be equal to zero. And likewise, this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero, okay? And another thing that we would like to check uh, uh, in this picture is that the, um, uh, the intersection of x1, uh, of, uh, of x1 and x2, this part which corresponds to the mutual information between x1 and x2 is equal to zero because uh, these three random variables are pairwise independent. So we have this equal to zero, this equal to zero, and this equal to zero, okay? However, the middle part actually is equal to, uh, to, to minus one. So this shows that this um, measure mu star for uh, three random variables is not necessarily always not negative. Okay, actually I, um, uh, actually I did this work almost 30 years ago. Okay, time really applies. So um, the, uh, well, I was trying to see under what conditions uh, can this, uh, can this uh, uh, quantity uh, be equal to zero. But it turns out that I, could, I was not able to find any particular structure that, uh, uh, that, uh, that characterizes uh, this vanishing of this quantity. Okay? So I, I did some com computer search and found this very strange thing. This is joint uh, distribution for th uh, three binary random variables, and uh, I actually could not find any structure in it. But if you, after you plug in these numbers and compute this uh, this quantity i x one semicolon y semicolon z, it, it becomes just it just becomes zero. So there doesn't seem to be any physical meaning uh, associated with this uh, this variable. However, it turns out that this quality is, uh, I mean, the the set theoretic meaning of this quantities is actually uh, very clear. And I'm going to show to you that uh, it, is, it is very useful. Useful. Okay? Uh, the example that I'm going to show is the uh, well-known example of Shannon's perfect secrecy theorem. And the setup is like this. So we have um, three random variables, x being the, uh, the plain text, y being the ciphertext, and z being the key. Okay. Now the that the only constraints on the three random variables are, are, are this. First, the plain text has to be decodable from the server text and the key so that the entropy of x given y and z is equal to zero. And we also need the, the system to be secure so that um, it, uh, x and y are uh, statistically independent. That is the plain text and the server text are independent of each other 
and that is the mutual information between x and y is equal to zero. Okay, so now let us code these these two constraints in the picture. So uh, now uh, just want to remind you that uh, Shannon's perfect secret, uh, perfect secrecy theorem says that if you want these constraints to be true, then the entropy of z must be out, lower bounded by the entropy of x. And this means that if the length of the of the key must be at least uh, the length of the plain text. Okay, so now let us explore this in terms of the picture. Okay, now the first constraint entropy of x given y z is equal to zero. So this, so we put a zero here, and then the, we have the mutual information between x and y is equal to zero. So this this means that these two guys when uh, when they add up it, it is equal to zero. Now we let uh, this. Uh, the value of this atom be A, which is a non-negative uh, value. If this is A, then this guy must be minus A. All right. Now, this is what we want to show. Okay, entropy of Z is greater than entropy of X, X, okay? The entropy of Z corresponds to this region. Entropy of X corresponds to this region, okay? Now, so this is the intersection of the four of the of these two regions. So uh, because they are common to to each each common to the two regions, they, we don't have to compare them. Okay. So so uh, now because uh, this is minus a and this a okay, so that they add up to a non-negative value, and we also know that uh, okay this. This atom must, which corresponds to a uh, conditional entropy, uh, is always non-negative. So this greater than or equal to zero. So now we compare this atom with this atom. This atom is at least as big as this atom, and this is uh, greater than or equal, to, or equal to zero. This is equal to zero. So bingo! We immediately shows that the, uh, the entropy of Z, that is the measure on this uh, this set, must be at least equal to the uh, the measure on this set. Okay. So this is uh, just a a very simple and intuitive um, uh, proof of uh, Shannon's perfect sequence theorem. Okay, now we went on to uh, uh, to look at the information diagrams for Markov chains. Now, the it turns out that you know if we uh, have a Markov chain x one x two up to x n in this order, okay, then the structure of uh, of this I mesh mu star is much simpler, and the information diagram can easily be displayed in two dimensions. Okay, now uh, for n equals three, okay, so we have this Markov chain x1, x2, and x3, even only if the mutual information between x1 and x3 condition x2 is equal to zero, or in set theoretic, theoretic terms, a mu star x1 intersect x3 minus x2 is equal to zero. All right. So now, because this uh, the value of mu star on this atom is always uh, equal to zero, it, uh, when you show the information diagram, you actually can suppress this atom. Okay, I'm going to show you how this can be done. Okay, now first, first of all, we have x, uh, mutual information between x one, x three, given x two is equal to zero. All right, so we so we, what we do is that when we uh, uh, show this information diagram, we actually can suppress this atom. And this this can be achieved by displaying only the, the top part of the picture. Okay, you can still hear me, right? Hello. Can you, can you still hear me? Uh, yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. Great. Okay. I just want to make sure that uh, you're still with me. Sorry about that. All right. So um, so if you uh, display only the top part of the picture, and after some modification, it becomes uh, this picture here. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to show you that uh, this is actually the right representation. Now in this information diagram, the uh, the mutual information between x1 and x3, okay, condition x2, which corresponds to uh, x1 intersect x3 minus x2, okay, and this is the the empty set. Okay, this guy intersect this guy, and then you subtract uh, x two. Okay, this is becomes the empty set, and mu star on the empty set is equal to zero. Okay, and moreover, the uh, mu star on the intersection of the three sets, which we uh, we mentioned before, in general could be non-negative. 
actually is always on, uh, could, could be negative. It, it actually is always on negative in this case. Now this is equal to, uh, you, you have intersection if x1, x2, and x3, okay. It turns out that uh, this is equal to the intersection of x1, x3, okay. And the, and this is just the mutual info, correspond to the mutual information between x1 and x3, and it's always on negative. And therefore, you know, we, we, uh, we have shown that uh, when, when we have a, a link three Markov chain, mu star is always a, a measure. That is, it, takes, it can take only uh, non-negative values. Okay, now how about for uh, a link four Markov chain, x1, x2, x3, and x4? Now it turns out that uh, it can be shown that mu star vanishes on the following five atoms. Okay, this is a necessary and sufficient condition for the Markov chain to hold. Okay, the information diagram can be displayed in two dimensions like this uh, in a way that uh, uh, you would expect in a moment. Okay, the, uh, the values of mu star on the remaining atoms, so, so I said that these five atoms are, 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 are always zero and the remaining 10 atoms actually corresponds to Shannon's information measures and, uh, and hence are non-negative. And so we again conclude that mu star is, is a measure. So I'm gonna show you some, uh, some details. So this is what the information diagram for a link four Markov chain looks like, which you would expect. Now, this is how, how, how things work, work out. Now, this is the, on, on, uh, here's a Venn diagram for, uh, for four sets which actually is uh, originally drawn by John Brandt himself. Now, the, uh, I mentioned that uh, for the four uh, link four Markov chain, there are five atoms that, uh, that always uh, uh, vanish, and these corresponds to these five atoms, okay? Okay, I'm going to redraw the picture in a way that uh, all these five atoms are suppressed, suppressed to the empty set, okay? And I claim that this is the, uh, the right way to draw the picture. Now to, as a sanity check, you know, the, um, in this picture, you know, there are a total of 15 um, atoms because uh, usually when you draw a Venn diagram, you have a, something outside, okay? Uh, and there's another atom, which is outside the units of all the, all the, um, uh, the, the sets. But uh, in an information diagram, we, uh, we, we don't have uh, this, rectangle outside, uh, which I won't get into, into the details. So, so in short, we have um, a total of two to the power four minus one uh, equal to 15 atoms and five of them are, uh, 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 are equal to zero. So there, there are a, a remaining of 10 atoms, okay? And the, you just check in this picture that the, uh, the current number of atoms are exactly 10 and they correspond to each one of these uh, atoms which are not forced to zero, okay? Moreover, all these atoms, th these 10 atoms that remains, each one of them corresponds to uh, a Shannon's information measure. And therefore, uh, a new mu star in this particular situation uh, always takes a, a non-negative value and therefore uh, mu star is, is a measure. Okay, so this is just, this just give you the general idea of how things work out. And the, it turns out that this theme actually goes on for a general N. And uh, so this is what the information diagram looks like. It looks like a, a series of mountains uh, intersecting in, in a generic way. Okay, so, and also that's the, um, uh, for these atoms in this picture, they all correspond to uh, some Shannon's information measures and hence mu star is, um, is always non negative. Okay, so here is a, um, uh, some examples I would like to show you uh, how this picture can be useful. First of all, we look at the celebrated uh, data processing theorem, which says that for a link of a Markov chain X, Y, Z, and T, okay, the mutual information between X, T is always less than or equal to, to the mutual information between Y and Z. All right. Okay, so it looks like this. So let's take a look at uh, how we obtain this picture uh, visually. All right, so Ixt corresponds to, to the intersection of X and T like this, and Yz 
ZT corresponds to the intersection of Y and Z. So, so it contains these four, four dots. Because this is a, a, a measure, uh, we immediately see that, you know, the, in fact, the IYZ, IYZ is uh, this guy here, because it's actually equal to uh, these four dots here, and each one of them can be written as a non uh, Shannon's information measures. And IXT is just one of the terms. Okay, So obviously, IXT is less than or equal to uh, IYZ. Okay, here's another more elaborate example. Uh, this actually came from a a paper I wrote with uh, Fang Wei Fu back in 2002, and we were working on a multiple description problems, uh, uh, and and we uh, we are working on new converse proof. Okay, so the the new converse proof, based on the structure of the the problem, calls for the following identity. Okay, so we have a uh, Markov chain like this: x, y, z, t, and u. So it call, it calls for a uh, an identity like this, which it's very hard to interpret and also very difficult to prove. But when you use the information diagram, it turns out to be extremely easy, All right? So what you do is that on the left-hand side, you know, the entropy of Y plus ent entropy of T. So what you do is that you consider this part, entropy of Y, and then you put a, a dot on each of these atoms uh, correspond to uh, the set Y, okay? And then for entropy of T, you consider uh, this part, okay? And then you also put another dot, okay, uh, put, uh, put uh, a dot on each of these atoms. As a matter of fact, I give credit to uh, the late Tom Kofer for teaching me this uh, dotting technique for counting the, uh, the atoms, which uh, turns out to be very handy. So you do this on the, uh, for the left-hand side, you get this picture, and then you do exactly the same thing for, uh, each, uh, for, for each of the four terms on the right-hand side. And then you compare the picture and you find out that, that they are exactly the same. So this shows that the two, uh, two expressions on the, uh, on the left and on the right are, uh, are exactly, uh, are their identi identity, okay? So uh, this gives you a more elaborate uh, example. Okay, now I'm going to change gear to uh, another topic. Before I do that, I, I'll give you a a motivating example. So I'm going to associate a, a Markov chain with a graph like this. So, so we have a Markov chain x1, x2, x3, x3, and x4. So we, uh, uh, we, we draw a graph like this, one, two, three, and four, okay? So the, I mean, as I mentioned, if the, uh, these four random variables forms a Markov chain, the I measure mu star always vanishes on these five atoms. So let's take a look at uh, uh, what these are. Okay, the first one is um, uh, one and then two complement, three and four complement. So, and then what I do is that uh, for those uh, uh, indices which are complemented, I strike out the, strike out the corresponding uh, 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 nodes, okay? So I strike out two and I strike out four, okay? Now for the second atom, uh, only the second, um, second variable is complemented, so I, what I do is that I strike out two, okay? And then for this third variable, um, I strike out two and three. And, uh, and then for the fourth set, I strike out three only. And for the fifth set, I strike out uh, one and three, like this. All right, now after going th through this, a very small example, no, I, uh, this is a very interesting observation. The observation is that the vanishing atoms are exactly those such that by removing the conditioning nodes, the remaining graph becomes disconnected. Okay. For example, this um, mu star vanishes on this atom, you know, uh, and graphically, uh, the indication is that, you know, you remove two and four from this graph, and then the, the graph becomes disconnected. Okay. So this is, uh, this happens to to um, all the five atoms uh, consistently. So it, it means that something is happening uh, there, which is worth investigating. Okay, now here are two questions. Why does the information diagram for a Markov chain look like this? Okay, while well, we, we came up with, we would do this by trial and error, and then uh, 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 it turns out to be like that. Okay, you can, you can, you can uh, if this is, 
yeah, you're satisfied with this answer, uh, then it's fine. But I, I'm not particularly satisfied with this with this uh, answer. I I, 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 I want to find a more uh, more fundamental reason why the information diagram looks like this. Okay, and the reason is that uh, what we, we first did, uh, actually, I, uh, there's a little story about this. Um, uh, Kawabata actually obtained uh, this picture uh, 10 years before me and uh, in his master thesis, uh, although he, uh, but he didn't publish it. Uh, uh, I, then then uh, about 10 years uh, later, I uh, presented this in the, the 1991 uh, ISIT, and then uh, I discovered that he actually had this result in his uh, master thesis uh, about uh, about ten years ago. Although he didn't have a very uh, rigorous uh, justification of the diagram, but the the main the, the main idea is there. Okay, so we decided to publish a paper together. All right. So the thing is that you know, we we first came out with this this diagram by trial and error. What what if trial and error does doesn't work? Would there be a better way to to come up with these pictures? Okay, so these are these are two picture two questions I, I had in mind. Okay, and then uh, it turns out that the the answer is actually uh, uh, embedded in a more uh, in a more general subject called Markov random field. Okay, here's an illustration of a Markov random field. A Markov random field. Uh, first, it's defined by a graph, and where, where each uh, node uh, is associated with a random variable. You think of uh, each node as being uh, a random variable, and then uh, we take our subset like this. So, what it corresponds to is that uh, you know, if you remove these three nodes in the in the red circle, then uh, the remaining graph is um, has three co components, okay, which are the this, this one, this one, this one, okay? So this, the mark of conditions corresponds to that if you condition on these three random variables, then these three groups of random variables are mutually independent. Okay, that's what the, a, a mark of random field tells you. Okay, now, uh, first I would like to introduce some graph theory terminologies, very simple ones. So we let uh, G equals VE be an undirected graph with no loop, okay? As usual, V is the set of vertices and E is the set of F edges. Okay, now for a, a subset of uh, nodes, you, uh, the components of a G backslash U is denoted by this. Okay, so if you remove all the uh, nodes in U and the remaining graph is then denoted by G backslash U has these components, v, V1, U, V2, U up to V, S, U of U. Okay, so S, U is the number of components in the remaining graph when you remove uh, the nodes in U. Okay, when S U is uh, greater than one, that is uh, the re remaining graph is more than one component, we say that uh, all the, the remaining graph is disconnected. We say that U is a, a cassette. All right. Okay. I'm going to introduce the notion of type one type two atoms, which uh, actually have been discussed before, but not in a very formal way. Okay, so a, uh, this is the, the general form of a, an atom, okay? A, an atom is the form Y1 tilde intercept Y2 tilde uh, in, uh, up to intercept Y and tilde, where, uh, where Y1 tilde is equal to X1 tilde or X1 uh, to the complement, okay. Either it, either it, it is the, the set variable itself or the complement of the set variable, okay. Now, once we have a uh, this atom A, okay, uh, we can define a set U A, which is the the set of indices such that the that particular uh, set variable is uh, is complemented, and it, and it's very easy to see that A and U A determine each other. Yeah. Uh, is one example. Suppose A is equal to x1, uh, x intersect x2 complement, intersect x3, intersect x4 complement, okay? And then UA is equal to 2, 4, because uh, these are the two, two, two indices that are complemented. And um, obviously from A you can obtain UA and from A, uh, UA you can obtain A. So they de determine each other. Okay, now 
Based on this, we can define uh, two types of atoms. Now for an atom A, now we can define UA, which is like, uh, which is defined here. And then we, uh, and then we remove all these um, uh, uh, nodes in UA from the graph G. If the remaining graph is connected, then we say that the, uh, the atom is a type one atom, okay? Again, if you give me an atom A, I determine UA, and then I, I remove those uh, uh, nodes in UA from G. If the remaining graph is connected and it's a type one atom, if it is disconnected, then it is a type two atom, okay? All right, so uh, now here's a very important theorem. Uh, uh, when we're in the, the numbering of this uh, theorem is actually uh, uh, based on the numbering in, in my textbook. Okay, so uh, this theorem says that uh, X, I, I, and B, this is the, the set of all uh, random variables um, indexed by the, uh, by, the, by the nodes in graph G, we form a Markov graph, uh, instead of random variables form a Markov graph G, okay, you think of uh, a Markov graph being a generalization of a, of a, um, of a Markov chain, even only if uh, the I measure mu star vanishes on all the type two atoms. Okay, so this is a very sharp characterization. Okay, let me give you a very simple example. Uh, so we are given a graph like this, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, with this connectivity. And um, now with respect to the, the graph G as shown, there are only three type two atoms. Uh, the first one is a one, two, three, bar, and four. Now why is this a type two atom? Because uh, you remove uh, node three from the graph and the graph becomes disconnected, okay? And the second, Atom is one bar, two, three bar, and four. And why is this a type two atom? Uh, because if you remove node one and node three, the graph becomes disconnected. And likewise, uh, uh, the atom one, two bar, three bar, and four is a type two atom. And all other atoms uh, you can check from the graph are type one atoms. Okay, so there are a, uh, for four random variables, there are 15 atoms and the three of them are type two and the, and the remaining uh, 12 uh, atoms are all type one, okay? So the, the last theorem says that the, um, the random variables x1, x2, x3, and x4 form a, a, a Markov graph represented by this, this one, even only if mu star on these three atoms uh, is equal to zero. Okay, so this uh, and a quick illustration of the theorem. Okay, now the, um, another theorem that we uh, recently obtained is, uh, is, is like this. Uh, it says that Markov chain is essentially, quote unquote essentially, the only Markov random field such that uh, mu star is always not negative. Okay, now the, um, so we know that for a uh, for Markov, we know that in general mu star can uh, can be negative, and we know that for, uh, for Markov chain mu star is always always uh, non negative. We want to ask whether beyond uh, a Markov chain whether you can have any Markov random fields such that uh, mu star is always non negative. It turns out that uh, uh, no, that is not possible. Okay, the the sketch of the proof is like this. So the um, so the claim is that the Markov chain is uh, is uh, uh, the only Markov random field such that mu star is always not negative. Okay, now the uh, uh, so we consider uh, two types of uh, graphs. The first type of graph is the one shown in the uh, uh, on the left, which is one such that there exists a a node with uh, with degree three or more. Okay, and then we show that. Uh, uh, you have a graph with a node uh, such that the degree is at least equal to three, then you can construct uh, random variables such that mu star is, is, non, is negative, okay? And another type of graph that we consider is this one, it's like, a, like a cycle, okay? So uh, this one, every node has, uh, has degree two, and then but they, they go around like this. Again, we can construct random variables uh, such that uh, mu star is, non, is negative, okay? 
So other than these two types, uh, the only type that you can construct is um, is like this. Okay. So this is a, this is a Markov chain. Okay. All right. All right. Well, the reason why I say that Markov chain is essentially the only Markov random field such that mu star is always non-negative is because uh, we also have this type of graph which is uh, which has mu star always non-negative. This is a uh, a collection of mutually independent uh, uh, Markov chains, and in, in graph theory terms, it's called a, a forest. Okay, and and this for this we also have a uh, mu star always non-negative. Other than all the uh, these cases, uh, we can always find uh, construct random variables such that uh, the mu star is is negative. Okay, the next topic I'd like to discuss is a. Uh, is called a subfield of Markov random field. So a subfield is just a just a uh, just a big uh, name, but actually it it it, it means very sim something very simple. So we have a Markov random field, and we in the Markov random field we just consider a subset of the random variables. Okay, and this is called subfield of the Markov random field. Okay. So we let uh, x, i, i, and v form a mark random field represented by some graph, g equals v, e. And uh, we let v prime be a subset of v. Okay, we ask what is the smallest graph that, that can always represent the sub the subfield, okay? So uh, why, why are we, so we, we, we have a graph, uh, g equals v, e, and we fish, uh, and then we take our certain subset of random variables from this. And we ask what is the smallest graph that can always represent uh, this subset of random variables. So why are we interested, interested in the smallest graph rep representation? Because uh, for any random variables, uh, let's say uh, any four random variables, you can always represent it using a, um, uh, a, a, um, a, a complete graph. Because a, com a complete graph actually doesn't uh, impose any mark of constraints. So any joint distribution with, would be uh, representable by such a graph. Okay. The smaller the, the graph is, the, the more stringent uh, the Markov constraints are. That's why we always seek uh, uh, the smallest graph representation. However, for a, uh, a general distribution, there may not even be a, a, a smallest graph in, in general. Okay, I'm going to give you a, a, a one very simple example. Suppose we have a Markov chain represented by uh, by a graph like this, and then uh, we consider a subfield which is um, denoted uh, denote, uh, by these red dots. I change the, the dot from from black to, to to red. Okay. Now the uh, I, I for the edges I use the uh, the blue color uh, to represent for a special reason. I want you to think of these dots being uh, cities. And these edges being uh, a river, okay, uh, which is just water, okay. That's why I use uh, the, the, the the light blue color. Okay. Now we want to uh, we, we want to consider this uh, this uh, this subfield, Markov subfield, okay, containing these four dots. When we ask what is the smallest graph representation of uh, uh, for for these four dots, okay, for these four random variables. Now, the, I'm going to show you a procedure. Okay, the, uh, the first step of the, pro of the procedure is to change the, the, uh, the remaining black dots into blue. Okay, so you change the, uh, so, so we're going to, you're going to remove these, uh, these random variables. Okay, and uh, so uh, in, another way to think of it is that we now consider the marginal distribution of these four random variables. Okay, now by changing these, uh, the color of these uh, cities to, uh, to blue, you, you think of it as converting the cities into water, okay? Now, once this is connect, uh, converted into water, then these two uh, cities are connected by water, this, these two are connected by water, and these two are, are connected by water. So, so we put a, 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 a new edge here. Well, this actually is an old edge because uh, originally these two are connected anyway. And now there's an, a new edge here and a new edge here. So. So this uh, this is nothing but a Markov subchain, okay, which we know uh, is the case. We have a long Markov chain, and then we, we uh, by considering some taking on some subset of random variables, they form Markov subchain. So this is the idea. 
Okay. Now the uh, so here V prime uh, consists of these four uh, these four uh, nodes, and this is the graph. The graph constructed by such a procedure is denoted by G star uh, V prime. Okay. So and and evidently. Uh, you know the, the as I mentioned the, the, the subfield which consists of these four random variables is represented by by uh, G star V prime which form a Markov subchain. Okay. So now let us look at a more elaborate example. So we have a graph like this to start with, and then we consider uh, this subfield uh, indicated by the, the red dots. Okay. The first thing to do is to convert the the the, the black dots into blue. Okay, like this. Now, so so uh, these are the, uh, the 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 dots that are originally directly connected, but now because we re we remove these uh, blue dots, uh, so all these uh, all these uh, nodes are connected by water. So that's why we put a new edge here, new edge here, new edge here, and new and new edge here. Okay. Then likewise, this this patch of water connects all these four dots. That's why we put a new edge here, a new edge here, and a new edge here. Okay. So this is the, the G star V prime for this, uh, for this graph. Okay. It turns out that uh, this G star V prime is just uh, the smallest graph we, uh, we're looking for. Okay. For any uh, Markov random field represented by a graph G, and we consider a a subset of random variables v prime that forms a subfield, then the G star v prime is the smallest graph that can always represent the subfield v prime. Okay, that's the that's the, why this uh, this graph G star v prime is important. Okay, now the, this result uh, was actually obtained first by uh, Sadeki in two thousand thirteen from the uh, uh, from the graphical model point of view. And then, uh, and then I revisited the the problem. We re, we, re, we revisited visited the problem from the information theoretic point of view. Okay, and the it turns out that the this information theoretic point of view uh, solved a mystery that was in my mind for uh, for uh, more than twenty years. Okay, so I, let let's go. Uh, uh, so I, uh, previously I. I was uh, motivated by these questions. Okay, so we have this uh, information diagram for Markov random uh, Markov chains, and the questions are: Why does the information diagram for a Markov random field takes this form? Okay, and uh, another way to ask this question is: um, Is there a systematic way for constructing the information diagram for Markov chain that leads to this form? So, for example, we don't know that this is the form to start with. Is there a way that we can uh, arrive at this form? Okay, so we, we this this answer actually can be um, can be obtained through the investigation of a more general question. Okay, is there a systematic way for constructing the information diagram for for a general Markov random field, not just a Markov chain? Okay, now here's the possible approach to do that. Thank you, then. So, yes, it's okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I think that was an accident from someone else. Uh, uh, okay, good. Okay. So here's a, a possible approach to the problem. So we consider a graph G equals VE, and uh, we let the uh, V be uh, this um, set, of, set of integers from one up to N. Okay. And then what we do is that we, from G, uh, which actually is G star NN, uh, okay, uh, the G star V prime is the procedure that I've uh, shown to you before. So if uh, you take V prime to be this uh, V, then, then G is just equal to v, G star NN, okay? So what, you, what we do is that uh, we remove uh, N, uh, no N from the graph, to, and then we went through this procedure and we obtained G star N, N minus one, and then we remove N minus one and so on and so forth. Eventually, we got only one node left. And then we obtain this uh, this graph G star N one. Okay, so 
there's only one node that left in the graph and, and that node corresponds to a, uh, to a random variable. And, and we know how to construct the information diagram okay, because there's only one uh, random variable. Okay, you can, you can draw it like this, you can draw it like this, it doesn't matter, okay. Okay, now, and, um, and then based on uh, G star N1, which we know how to construct, and, uh, and then we recursively construct uh, information diagrams for G star N2, G star N3, so and so forth. Okay, so we orig originally we go in this direction, now we go back in the, in the reverse direction, okay. So now how do, you, do we go from G star N1 to G star N2? I'm going to uh, tell you how, how, how it can possibly be done, okay. So basically what you do is the, the approach is that you have a some uh, uh, pictures like this, okay? And then you add to this a, uh, a, a new uh, curve like this, okay? Representing the new variable in some suitable way, which I'm going to explain. Okay. And then we denote these uh, information diagrams by D1, D2 up to Dn and uh, and the question is, can this approach work? What are the possible problems that you can run into? Okay. Now, uh, recall that you know, uh, uh, a, a, uh, an information diagram DM is the correct representation of this graph G star NM if all type one atoms are not suppressed and all type two atoms are suppressed. This is the, the goal. We want to find a, an information diagram that correctly represent, uh, cor uh, cor uh, correctly represent this graph, okay? And th these are the two criteria. Uh, criteria. Uh, type one atoms are not suppressed and must be shown, okay? Because they, they don't, uh, mu star does not necessarily take uh, zero values on them, so you must show them. And type two atoms, mu star always show always uh, assume uh, uh, the zero value on it, so you can, we, want, we want to suppress them. Okay, so, uh, so from DM, uh, DM is constructed from DM minus one by adding a closed curve, CM, uh, representing the new uh, set variable that, that you, you add back to, to, to the information diagram in some suitable way. Okay, now the one thing I need to explain is that uh, when you have um, m minus one uh, uh, set variables and you have an atom A, when you add a new uh, set to it, each atom becomes two atoms. So one of them is uh, A in the set XM uh, tilde, the new set variable, and the other one is A in the set XM tilde complement. Okay. And, uh, and also there is a, a type one atom uh, in the new uh, in the new uh, uh, diagram, which is which does not come from the atoms of the smaller uh, diagram, this, namely the one which is the uh, uh, outside the union of all these uh, m minus the first m minus one uh, set variables, and then intersect with uh, x m uh, tilde with the complement. Okay, so the idea is that let's say if you you draw a picture like this, draw a picture like this. So, okay. And then the, uh, this is the, when you have uh, three variables, you have this, this, new, this new atom, uh, which does not come from the, the previous uh, two set variables. Uh, whereas this, this atom comes from splitting, uh, splitting this part, okay? This comes from splitting this part, and this comes from splitting this part. Okay, and and this 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 uh, atom does not come from uh, the atoms in the union of the previous two uh, two set variables. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, when you add a uh, CM, which is a a curve representing uh, the new variable uh, XM, okay, you can do one of the following to each atom A. Suppose you have an atom A like this, atom A. And now I want to uh, uh, draw a new curve CM. Okay. So I can include, okay, include. So this is a CM. 
Okay. Or I can exclude. Okay, exclude like this. This is my CM. Or I can split. I can split like this. Okay, so these are the only three things that you can do uh, to an atom, an, ex an, ex an existing atom graphically. Okay. Now, however, there may be a potential problem. So is it possible that um, an atom A is actually a type two atom, while either the two atoms that it generates uh, a intersect XM complement or A intersect XM complement, uh, I'm sorry, A intersect XM uh, tilde or A, or A intersect XM tilde complement are both type, type one atom. Okay, now the, the issue is the following. Suppose you have an atom A, which is already suppressed, so let's say it's being suppressed as a dot. And then you, uh, it becomes two atoms and, uh, but one of these two atoms, uh, is a, uh, at least one of these two atoms uh, is, a, is a type one atom, which you need to display. But because A is already suppressed, you cannot possibly display any of these two atoms. Okay, that, that's the issue. Okay, now, fortunately, uh, it can be proved that uh, this cannot happen. Okay. Another issue that we need to worry about is that uh, uh, the case that when A is a type one atom, while the two atoms that, uh, that are being generated by it uh, are both type two atoms. Again, graphically, you have, an, you have a problem because you have an atom A like this, and then you split it into two atoms. And uh, uh, if you split if you split like this, you, uh, you compress this atom, or if you uh, split it like this, then you compress uh, this atom. You cannot compress both atoms uh, in a new information diagram uh, simultaneously. That's, uh, again, this is a graphical issue. Okay. And fortunately, uh, it can be shown that this is also not possible. So with this, um, uh, we are ready to give you uh, the recipe. Okay, so now first of all, you know, uh, each type to uh, based on what we uh, 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 we have ruled out. Okay, each type two atom of uh, in this graph, which consists of uh, m minus one uh, nodes, and uh, so each a type two atom in, in this uh, in this graph uh, will consist of m minus one nodes, and it's, it's being suppressed in this information diagram because uh, we we assume that dm minus one is the, is the correct representation. So uh, such a, a type two atom will become two type two atoms in the, in the new information diagram, okay? And uh, now I'm going to define a set okay, called uh, gamma M. So these are all the, the sort of neighbors of, uh, of, uh, of, of, the, of the node M in this graph G star and M, okay? I'm gonna give you some, uh, uh, some uh, illustration. So, so let, let's not worry about this. Okay. So, associated with uh, with uh, with M is a is a uh, set gamma M. Okay. So, now we consider a type one atom in the uh, original uh, in the original graph. Okay. So, if the so we we need to decide how the new curve C M would intersect with the the existing atoms. So, if uh, this atom A is not in Xi for any I in this set gamma, then we exclude, okay? If A is in only one I in this, uh, in this set gamma M, then we split. And uh, if A is in Xi tilde for more than one I in this, gamma, uh, in this set gamma M, then we need to distinguish two uh, cases, okay? In one case we split and the, in the other case we include. So basically uh, this is a recipe telling you how you, sh you, you, sh you should draw the curve CM representing the, the new set variable XM, uh, XM tilde. Okay, so uh, I'm going to illustrate this procedure uh, 
by means of uh, our good old friend, the Markov chain. So we have a Markov chain, one, two, three, four, like this. And suppose we strike out uh, four, and then we obtain the subchain one, two, three, and then the strike out three and obtain the subchain one, two, and then uh, and then obtain the uh, uh, subchain, which consists of only one variable, one, okay? So, so we know how to draw the information diagram for one variable, looks like this. And then uh, now we add back uh, this, the node uh, note two to, uh, to it. And then in this uh, picture, uh, in this graph, we see that, you know, the, in this case, uh, gamma, oops, uh, gamma two is equal to one. Because in this uh, graph, okay, the, uh, the neighbor of, uh, of node two is, is one. All right, so the, uh, sorry. okay. Now this, uh, using this recipe, this, uh, this atom, which is in, um, in one, because uh, one is neighbor of two, this needs to be split. So when we draw uh, the, the, uh, the curve for the second random variable uh, X2, it needs to need to split this, uh, this atom. Okay, like, when we add the, uh, the node three, okay, we add node three, the, the neighbor of three is two. Okay, so one, this, this atom here is not, is, in, is not in two, so we exclude it, we're gonna exclude it. And then for these two atoms, uh, because they are in exactly one neighbor of three, uh, we're gonna split it. So this is how we do it. So we split like this. And likewise, we add, uh, uh, we add, uh, uh, the random var the, the variable four to it, and then we further split it. So this is a systematic approach that would give you this picture okay, for an information diagram for Markov chain. So one may ask, okay, is this procedure robust? Uh, okay, suppose we start with the Markov chain one, two, three, four, like this. Uh, this time we strike out two. Okay? Uh, we don't we don't necessarily have to strike out in 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 the in the order four, three, two, one. But now this this time we strike out two, then we strike out one, and then we strike out four, okay? So now we we start with uh, uh, this information diagram for random variable X3, and then uh, and then we uh, add to four, add four to it, uh, so this is what, what we know what to do, okay? And then we add one to it, so same thing as before, like this. Now the the complication here is, is this. Now we when we add two, it has two neighbors, uh, one and three, okay? So the uh, this atom is in four. It's not. It's not in either one or three. So uh, it's going to be excluded. And uh, these three atoms. Now this atom is in the. Is in. This atom is in one, but not three. Okay. Uh, so it is in one of the, in one one neighbor. This this is in three, but not in one. It's in one neighbor. It's in three, but not in one. So it is in, in one neighbor of two, whereas. These two atoms are in two, uh, two neighbors of two, okay, of, of the node two. And that's why we need to check the cases and it turns out that uh, these two atoms needs to be included. So based on this recipe, we draw the curve for, uh, uh, for the for random variable X2. And it, uh, again, it turns out to be the same form, okay. Now uh, we can apply this uh, recipe to draw more information diagrams like this. This is uh, the information diagram for Markov star. And we also can draw this, okay. We start with a, so one, two, three, four. We know that one, two, three, four form um, for Markov chain. So we start with this, uh, uh, this diagram and then we add uh, a random variable five to it and then we add random variable six to it. So it looks like this. Okay, this comes to, uh, brings me to the end of the talk. So uh, the, the, the conclusions are, the eye measure is naturally useful for characterizing Markov random fields and subfields. And the information diagram for a Markov random field can be constructed recursively. And the, uh, the eye measure mu star is always non-negative for Markov chain. And Markov chain is uh, essentially the only Markov random field that possesses this property. Okay, this is my last slide. Okay, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you.
thank you, Professor Yong. Um, okay. Oh, there's a question from uh, uh, Professor Slomo. Is this? Slomo. Slomo. Hi, Raymond. How are you? Hi, Hi Raymond. Fine, thank you. Yeah, I wanted to ask whether this information diagram for Markov chain can be actually used uh, if there is a chance to improve further on oh, cuts I, I and bound. I hear you. You hear me? Uh, you I, hear me? I, I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. How, how uh, about... Uh, uh -huh. Can you hear me? About you, you, can you hear you me? Can... Can uh, you hear no, me? No, it's better. Okay, please try. Okay. Please try again. Ah, okay. Uh, can you? No, no, I can. I can. Okay. The others yes. do. Do the others hear, hear me? me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Can. Yes. Yes. Raymond. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So I wanted to ask whether you know this information diagrams for Markov chain. Is there a chance that they can improve further on? Cuts and bounds, for example, for the relay channel, and I'm referring to the to work like Osgur Vu that uh, examine the geometry of the relay channel, or more, or actually more. We had a work in ITW 2019, where where the idea to improve over the cuts and bound was characterizing the tension between information measured in certain mark of chain. So, you know, it's geometric characterization of the tension. So I think those oh, things are related and there is a chance to, to come up with, with improved results on classical information problems. We dealt with the diamond, you know, the, with the diamond relay charm. Okay, maybe I, I can tell you what actually happened when uh, Frank Wei Fu and I came up with that five random variable Markov chain uh, information diagram? Okay, so what happened was that we were looking at this out bound by uh, um, Wissenhausen and Weiner, okay, on the uh, multiple descriptions problem, and the uh, what I what I noticed was that that bound was not the out bound was not symmetrical, which is a little strange because the problem is symmetrical. And so, so I, I, um, I conjectured a symmetrical uh, uh, out of bound and that calls for that particular uh, information uh, identity that I show you. And then I, I use the, um, uh, the information diagram to, to show that this is actually uh, true. Okay, so this is how, how it, it, it came up. So um, it could That's be helpful. Yeah. Yeah, it could be helpful. Yeah, that, that is exactly because of that result I asked this question because I think it's helpful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and uh, the, the bound that we use, uh, I told you, it, it appears in ITW 2019, mm -hmm. joint work with Aifer Osgor, Chuang Wu, and, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think I say not using this method, but still they are geometrical methods. So I think yeah, that I, I, there is a chance. I cannot say whether it's useful or not, but I think it is. Uh, it is worth giving it a try. No, I feel the, there is a chance. Might be, might worth a try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, Raymond. Mengo here. Can I ask a hi. question? Um, yeah. Yeah. So I had a question about. So we're talking about um, sort of general Markov random fields and specializing it to Markov chains. So I understand that when, right. when, when we have a Markov chain, this mu star has, has a lot of nice structural properties. You can prove a lot right. of things. I, I, I was just trying right. to get a sense when you talk about the general Markov random field, what, mm -hmm. like, what is it you cannot do? Like, where's the watershed? Like, like, what is it you cannot do? with the general Markov random field that you can do with a Markov chain, or is it the same? You can prove all the same thing. Uh, well, I mean, one, one, one thing that uh, uh, the Markov chain is very special is that mu star is always non-negative. It's non-negative, yeah, exactly. It's so, non-negative, and, and that actually actually gives you all the uh, inequalities you can ever prove. Right, okay, okay. So, okay, and but, uh, but for a uh, general Markov random fields is uh, much more complicated and uh, there could be 
non-genotype inequality. We, we don't know. Okay? Yeah. So are there any <laughs> conjectures? It's always you... possible. But for, any... for Markov chain, uh, we, we, we know already. Uh, be... um, well, I mean, the, the only thing that we can say at this point is that uh, beyond Markov, random, um, ran, Markov chains, then new stock can always be negative. <laughs> that, okay. That's, that's are, the only thing we can say. Are there, are there any conjectures you have for the more general case? Um, not for the time being, not, not any um, uh, reasonable conjecture uh, uh, at this point. Thanks, Raymond. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, Raymond. Uh, thank you for the fantastic talk. Uh, it is very interesting to listen to the theorem of uh, air measures and the uh, analysis of uh, Markov uh, random fields. Uh, can you suggest some possible future directions in this area? And also, you know, we are working largely for uh, data story systems. And do you see any possible uh, uh, application of this theorem of uh, I measures for data story systems, such as the um, uh, arrays in the data centers and etc.? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it is possible, but it's it's mm -hmm. hard for me to say anything concrete. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, you know, I uh, I indulge myself in the, this problem once every ten years or so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so ne next time I, I, I get into this problem, I, I, I could already have been have retired. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it, it's not something that I would uh, recommend a, a a PhD student student to look at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, For example, this 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 yeah. this um, problem, this question of why uh, the information diagram mm -hmm. for Markov chain looks mm -hmm. like this actually bothered me for more than twenty five years. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's a very hard, a challenging problem, huh? Uh -huh. No, I'm not after all, all these are uh, 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 elementary set theory thing. I mean, uh, the, the tools yeah. are not not hard at all, but uh, uh, but mm -hmm. getting um, the right insight is not uh, always easy. Okay. Okay, I see. Thank you. Uh. So Raymond, you said you've been looking at this for 30 years and every 10 years or so you become, you get inspired to look at the problem again. I'm yeah, curious, yeah, something, something so, like that. But I'm curious, you have time right now to look at this problem? I thought you were, had your hands full. Well, well I mean, uh, not, not, not a whole lot of time at this point, but I, I still need to, to, to uh, carry on with my research. Otherwise, uh, you know, my, my university is going to punish me. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I think Jonathan, Hello, Jonathan. Yeah. Hey, good uh, to see hi. you. Yeah, likewise. Um, yeah, it was a nice talk. Um, I was interested about this idea of positive and negative terms. I guess it seems things are a lot neater when everything is positive and you can get like inequalities and Hello? know that you could drop to... Oh, you can't hear? Hello? Uh, we can hear you. Uh, can you repeat? I cannot. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you, uh, you can hear me now. Okay. No, no, it's better. No. Okay, good. So yeah, you had... Um, uh, yes. You're looking for cases where you have ever, all the terms being positive, and I can see the benefit um, in terms of being able to get inequalities. Right. And you said you found some applications. Uh, is there still like some use in exactly. these diagrams when you have negative right. terms? Like, have they have have, have some useful results? Uh, came out even oh in the yes, yes. Negative uh, as, ones? I, as, as, as I uh, as I showed in the example of proving uh, Shannon's uh, perfect secrecy theorem. In fact, uh, that can also be generalized to a um, an uh, imperfect, se imperfect secrecy theorem uh, that uh, that can be found in my textbook. Yeah. Okay. So it all. Is that, is that all I mean, I mean the, uh, for a long time, people uh, only if three variables. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, for for a long time, people were very puzzled by that uh, that um, that quantity because it ha it has no physical meaning. Uh, so far, it still ha doesn't have any physical meaning, but this. The set, the set theoretical meaning is is uh, is already very useful. Okay. Yeah. I, actually, I coincidentally I saw someone mentioned that quantity in a talk like one week ago in in some uh, something related to information bottleneck. Um, I was a bit mm. surprised, <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, thanks for the answer. Yeah. So so did this I measure stuff actually? Uh, you can think of it as decomposing all these, uh, you know, information uh, identity problems into the constituents. Mm -hmm. And I, I suppose there's been some cases where, like, it's the only known way to prove something, like, 
or it's the only known reasonable or straightforward way to prove something. And like, it's not just for visualization, but it's actually proven new things, right? Yeah, well, I mean, then you can always uh, prove it in other means, but... Uh, but it might take but, a lot uh, longer. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's less systematic, yeah. Less systematic, okay, yeah. I would say. Okay, yeah. thank you. I mean, I guess once you know it's true, there's many different ways, right? Yeah, yeah. So are there any other questions for uh, Professor Raymond Young? Well, okay. Uh, some of my students are in the audience. I'm gonna tell them to ask a question uh, if you like. Um, Shlomo, uh, do you have another question? I noticed your hand is still up. Would, would you like to ask another question? Oh yeah, I see your your hand your hand too. <laughs> I think it may have been off from before. Yeah. Oh, Professor Yong, uh, just a quick question. So, so um, if I understand correctly, so um, the the sequence of contraction doesn't matter to obtain the information diagram. Uh, is that correct? Uh, sequence of com, um. For, for using that the recursive procedure to uh -huh. construct the information diagram for Markov random fields, yes, the, the sequence of uh, of uh, of reducing the graph actually doesn't matter. It oh. always gives you the same okay. same uh, uh, give you a, give, always give you back the same information diagram. Oh, so it's effectively linear. Uh, linear. No, I mean for 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 Markov chain, yes, a linear. Uh, are you oh. talking about the, the complexity or yeah complexity in general for oh, any uh, Markov random field? Uh, well, I, I actually I don't care too much about complexity because um, I see. Uh, if there are too many random uh, random variables, the information diagram would not be too useful anyway. <laughs> so we, oh, I see, we always I see. work with a, a relatively small number of um, of uh, random variables. Yeah. Ah. Okay. So so if the number is small, you just keep trying the different permutations. Uh. I mean, you, you can you can uh, uh, any permutation of indices will actually give you the give you the same same result. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. Okay, sure. Hmm. Uh, there's a question okay. from Rohan. Okay. Uh, uh, Rohan, do you want to just uh, yeah. unmute yourself? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, hi, Ron. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, there might be a little bit of background noise, but I was wondering whether uh, you're saying that the issue, uh, first of all, Professor, very nice, uh, very nice talk. I really liked it. It was very interesting. But I was wondering whether there was any uh, other information measures like other than channel entropy, for instance, like Renly entropy or such, uh, which could um, avoid the uh, negative problem. For instance, uh, if you can show that the information measures would be Provably positive or something? Would that be possible? Well, I mean, the uh, uh, well, we know that the, the uh, information divergence is always not negative, but uh, uh, and, and mutual, I mean, mutual information and, and uh, also entropy can, can be considered as a special case. But but once we go beyond Shannon's uh, information measures, things becomes uh, much more complicated. So that's why at, at, at the uh, 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 at the end of my talk, I put up this slide. Entropy is mysterious. Uh, so we we, uh, uh, we we have discovered so many nice uh, properties of uh, Shannon's information measures, but exactly why it is the case, I I still cannot say anything concrete. Okay? So you you can always ask a uh, a deeper question. You obtain. Uh, the solution of something you can always ask why the solution uh, uh, takes this form. Okay? <laughs> so, 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 so uh, it may be possible that there's some properties of uh, of uh, uh, the entropy that actually uh, can 
imply all these nice properties. So if you can discover such a property, then you may be able to generalize all these results to the more general uh, measures. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Yes. Um, okay, are there any more questions for uh, Professor Yang? Okay, if not, shall we um, uh, give uh, another round of thanks to Raymond for, um, you know, for supporting us and, and sharing with us his uh, thoughts. Thank you very much, Raymond. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for the great effort uh, yeah. uh, organizing this, this uh, webinar.